IBM Global Technology Services is uh, the largest unit inside IBM and as such it has the same strategic uh, uh, strategic uh, focus areas as the whole company. We have declared a 2015 roadmap in which uh, IBM committed to the shareholders that we would uh, deliver $20 uh, earnings per share by 2015 and that uh, the way we would be doing this was by focusing on four company-wide focus areas. Company-wide focus areas are smarter planet, so the convergence of digital and physical infrastructures and then everything that is connected to it. Second, analytics, which is a long-standing trend. Third is the change in delivery models that people call cloud, so the industrialization of services. And last but not least, uh, the uh, global markets units, which is basically the growth markets, uh, where we uh, try to answer the questions for IT that are raised by the economies in rapid growth. I think the correct way of looking at the services market is that it's in constant change. So there was a phase, uh, I remember there was a phase between 2000 and 2005 in, in which most of our business was driven by enormous mega deals. Hmm? We had a delivery model that was, uh, that was characterized by ad hoc single delivery structures for large accounts. Already in 2005 uh, we recognized that that model uh, wasn't very scalable and made a huge investment on uh, standardizing our global delivery processes. We called it the global delivery framework. And similarly, since uh, 2008 or 2010, I mean, you never, you're never able to pinpoint this exactly, but there is a movement towards more automation and engineering inside the solutions itself. How that instantiates itself in the market, whether this is an outsourcing contract or a managed services contract, or a systems integration project, that has always changed over, the, over time. So uh, it also depends a little bit by the regulatory frameworks, it depends by the general economic state. Uh, so uh, the important thing for IBM is that we invest to be ahead on those models because those influence whether you have a decent margin or whether you are commoditized. Long term, the bets that IBM has placed are in the spaces where we expect uh, sustained demand. Forget about, uh, forget about short term cycles. There will always be short term cycles. There will always be something. But long term, we think that the smarter planet kind of projects, so the fact that we need to make our cities uh, more manageable. The fact that we need to equip our basic infrastructure with sensors and to be able to influence that. Those are, those are phenomena that take 20 years. That's infrastructure build out that takes a long time. Similarly, uh, the competition in every industry, you, you pick the industry, whether it's packaged goods, whether it's telco, whether it's banking, they all try to differentiate on the interface to the user. If you want to, inter, uh, to differentiate on the interface to the user, you need to know your customer. The only way to know your customer is by harvesting data. That is the holy grail because uh, it is very difficult to scale a services business that is based just on bodies because there, there are physical limitations. So the infusion of IP, however instantiated, whether it's software, whether it's an application, whether it's tools, or whether it's extreme automation, which is the case of the cloud, is clearly uh, very, very beneficial to the economics and to, to the consistency in delivery. And uh, it is no different from uh, the industrialization that you have seen in manufacturing. Cloud computing does to IT what uh, Toyota did to the car manufacturing process. A very disciplined application of engineering disciplines 
to, uh, to the supply chain of IT. Watson is a learning machine. It has a set of technologies. You can feed Watson with knowledge. He organizes knowledge. Then he can discover connections between knowledge. He can interpret language hmm, and answer questions. That's a very different. That's a very different thing. Watson. Uh, Watson's first applications, we are training him as a doctor, if you want. <laughs> so in healthcare, uh, the first cases are claims, adjudication, and oncology. So we, we, to see, can Watson determine, can Watson authorize treatments uh, automatically? And the other thing is, can Watson discover or help discovering the diagnosis and connection in oncology. Just last week we announced that Watson now goes to Wall Street to learn his, uh, to learn his uh, uh, chaps as a stockbroker. So we are working with uh, City in that field. But frankly, the Watson technology is uh, applicable to any field in which you need to make uh, decisions based on uh, evidence of data.